In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn this into this using the iPad and Procreate. Just like all my videos too, it's all in real time, no time lapse, no edits. So if you wanna follow along step by step with me, keep watching. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a pair. Starting out, I'm using a 2000 by 2000 300 DPI canvas. This is an RGB canvas. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So if you wanna follow along with the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can download this palette from my website. If you just go to bjdell.com underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which I'll also link this down in the description below. You can find this along with a video at the top of the page that walks you through how to install a color palette in Procreate if you have problems. So I'll jump back and forth between brushes, but starting out, I'm gonna use the monoline brush that's part of the calligraphy brush set. This is a default Procreate brush that we're gonna start out with. And then later on, I'm gonna move on to one of my custom sets. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, coming up to my color palette, I'm gonna go ahead and select this first green color right here. That's gonna be our base color for our pair. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw an oval here in the middle of the canvas. Once that's drawn, I'm just gonna drag and drop my color in there. Now, I'm gonna come up here to my arrow. I wanna make sure that snapping, or magnetic and snapping is turned on so I can have this in the center there. You see the orange line coming down, shows that's in the center. Kind of want it towards the bottom here of the canvas though. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose warp so we can kind of change the shape of this more into something that looks like a pear. So to do this, starting here at this cross section line, I'm just gonna drag this in towards the center here. And then about halfway down in this box, let's just go ahead and drag that out and then that line here again we'll pull in just a tad bit there and then pull out at the top flattening here from the bottom by pulling up and then we'll pull out one more time and this is totally up to you what kind of shape you want to get I think that looks pretty pear shaped though so there we go we've got the shape of our pear of course, you can draw this by hand if you want, but I find starting out with that simple shape and then using the warp tool really lets you fine tune it and you get that nice line all the way around. So there we go, we've got that. Next up, let's do the stem. So coming up here to the layers menu, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus button for a new layer. And then we're gonna touch this holding down and drag it down underneath that pair layer. So now with this layer selected, we're gonna come back up here to the color palette. And I'm gonna choose this dark brown color here for the stem. And then coming up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make an oval shape again here. See, I've got my pencil skipping a little bit here. I gotta twist the cap on or the tip on a little bit better. So we'll get the oval shape in here. Still skipped a little bit, but that's okay. Drag and drop the color in here. So I had that skip there, didn't completely fill it in. All right, so now it doesn't really look like a stem. So we're gonna do the same technique here that we did with the pair. We're gonna hit the arrow here with warp selected then. I'm gonna pull in the bottom, pull out the top and up, and then back in and just kind of have this curved stem shape here up at the top. Once I'm satisfied with that, just hit the brush to lock it in. And there we go, we've got the top part of the stem there, but I also wanna make it a little bit three-dimensional here. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer. And then I'm gonna tap on this, I'm gonna set this layer as clipping mask. So this allows us to draw on this layer without going outside of what's colored in down here. So with that selected then, I'm gonna come back up here to my color palette. And I've got this third color on the top, this brown color. We're gonna use that and just kind of color in an oval shape up here. So now we've kind of got that three-dimensional look going on. So that's the stem. Next up, let's go ahead and go up to our layers again. Coming down here to the bottom, let's make a new layer. And then we're gonna drag this down underneath that layer too. So this is our very bottom layer now. 
and this one will do a leaf. So coming up here to my color palette again, I've got this green color right here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make an oval here for the leaf, drag and drop my color in there. And then we're gonna come back up to the arrow again with warp selected, we can kind of fine tune this Pulling out the top here, we can kind of pull it into a point, pull out the bottom until we're satisfied with it. Now we've got a nice leaf shape there. And then let's go ahead and draw a line kind of down the center of that leaf. So we're gonna come back up here to the color palette and I'm gonna choose this darker green color here and then just kind of draw a line there coming towards the end. I'm gonna select that base green color again, and just kind of come in here and draw over the end of that so it's got a nice little taper. You don't get a taper with monoline, so we can kind of make one there and kind of fake it. All right, so we've got the base shape done. We're good. Now, we just need to give some personality to this guy, give him some eyeballs. So to do this, let's go ahead and come up to our layers menu again. This time, we're gonna go ahead and tap on layer one for the pair. We're gonna make a new layer. And then we're gonna come up here to our color palette. And the next color on the top line here, we've got this kind of off-white color. We'll use that for the whites of the eyes. So let's go ahead and draw a circle here, holding down with our pencil and then tapping again and holding down with our other finger, locks it into a perfect circle. We can drag and drop that color. I'm gonna grab my arrow here and with uniform selected, just going to adjust the size a little bit. I'm also going to turn off these magnetic and snapping right now so I can fine tune it a little bit more. Then once I've got those done, I'm going to turn those back on. All right, so we've got the left eye. Let's go ahead and do the right now. And a lot of times, if you've watched my videos before, I'll do the, the whites of the eye, the iris, and the pupil all in the same layer and then flip them after they're duplicated. We're gonna do it a little bit different this way on um, this video, just because I'm gonna do some shading a little bit differently on the eyes. So let's go ahead with this layer selected. I'm gonna slide this to the left and I'm gonna duplicate this one. We're gonna grab that arrow and we're just gonna drag this off to the side. So we now have the left and the right eye. Now that we've got those, I can go ahead and pinch them together and those are all on one layer now. Now let's go ahead and work on the iris. So let's make a new layer again. I'm gonna tap this one, and I'm gonna set this one to clipping mask as well. Come up here to the color palette, and I'm gonna choose this blue color right here. And we'll just draw in a circle for the iris here. Drag and drop the color in there. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to slide that one to the left and duplicate it. That way we know the left and the right are the same size. And then we're going to come up here to our arrow. We're just going to drag it across. And there we go. So we've got the iris on both eyes. Now let's do the pupils. So coming back up here, I'm going to go ahead and pinch these together. If you have trouble pinching, you can also just tap the top layer and just hit merge down. So they both work the same way make a new layer here coming up to our color palette then uh, the second row here the fourth color over we've got black let's go ahead and use that for the pupil just do a little circle there locking it in dragging and dropping the color in there and then i'm going to go ahead and grab my arrow i'm going to turn off snapping and magnetic for right now i just want to adjust that a little bit better that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead, go up to our layers menu, slide this one to the left and duplicate that one. Back to our arrow. Let's turn our snapping and magnetic back on and slide that one to the right. So there we go, we've got our left eye and we have our right eye. We're gonna leave these on separate layers here. We can merge these together. So we'll merge down. So we've got three different layers for the eyes right now, and we're gonna leave them like that for right now until we go in and start doing the shading and the highlights. So now let's go ahead and work on the mouth. So coming down here to layer one, let's go ahead and make a new layer. 
And then we're going to come up here to our color palette. And the second to last color here, we've got this darker maroon color. Select that. Then we're going to come in here and just do a circle here. That was not a circle. Do a circle here. We're going to drag and drop that color in. Now I don't want a big open mouth like this. I want to cut it in half. And instead of using the eraser, I've talked about this before. One thing that you can use to your advantage are the edges of the canvas. So if we go up here to our arrow and we just slide this up, you'll see we've got nodes here on the left and right. And that shows exactly where the middle is. As long as we have those snap to the edge of the canvas, once we lock that in, and bring it back down with the arrow, you're gonna see that cuts that perfectly. So we have an exact line across there. Sometimes you might struggle and you might get a line that you think is straight across, but it might go up, it might go down, and it just doesn't go perfectly straight across. That's a way that you can get a perfectly straight line. And if you don't like the shape of the mouth, then you can always go in here to the arrow again and go to free form and just kind of change it. I'm going to turn off the snapping and magnetic here and get it to where it's not perfectly uh, circle, circular, not a perfect circle. And just right there, I think that looks pretty good. So we've got the mouth. Let's go ahead and get a tongue in there now. So coming back up here to our layers menu, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer on top of the mouth. And then tapping on this one, we're going to set this as clipping mask. So once again, this is going to allow us to draw that tongue inside the mouth and not go outside of the colors that we have on that layer eight. So with that set as clipping mask, then let's go ahead and go up to our color palette. And very last color on that top row is this pink. Let's go ahead and select that. And then just do kind of a oval shaped here. Got the right, tongue, right side of the tongue there. And we're gonna do the tongue on two separate layers because it really helps out when we go in and do the shadows and highlights. So we'll go ahead and make a new layer. If we go down to the tongue or the mouth layer here and make a new layer, you'll see this already is set as clipping mask because whenever you make a new layer, it automatically adds that layer on top of the currently selected layer. If you have a layer already on top of that set as clipping mask, it's going to set that as clipping mask as well. So it just saves a step along the way. So with that selected, still using the same brush and the same color, we're just going to add in the tongue here on the left side. All right, so there we go. That's our base shape. That's pretty much, if you want to call it color flats. Now we're ready to go in and actually make this thing pop, add some highlights, add some shadows, and really get this thing rendered out. So to add the shadows and highlights, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our layers menu again, tapping on the shape for the pair body right here. We're going to go ahead and make a new layer. And then this one, we're going to go ahead and set this one as clipping mask as well. Now for my color, I'm going to come up here to the color palette and we're going to switch over to this darker green color here. So second row, first color. And this is where I'm going to switch over to one of my custom sets here. So we're going to use my texture pack. This pack is available on Gumroad. So uh, if you already have it, you can use this. If you don't have it, I'll leave the link in the description below. You can purchase it off of there. Or if you want to just find another brush that's going to work for you that you have built into Procreate, but some of these are going to be pretty specific for this one. So let's go ahead then with that texture brush pack selected. I'm going to go ahead and use sand as my first brush. And then I'm going to come over here to the brush size and I want to set this to about 19, 20%. And then I need to decide where's my light source coming from. So I think with this one, we're going to have the light source coming in from this top left hand corner, which means we're going to have kind of the highlights here and then shadows are going to fall on this back right hand side and down here underneath. So now that we've got that decided, we can start to add in the shadows here. So I'm just going to start here at the bottom. And just real light, not very hard. I'm just going to start building up the shadows around here, going darker here in the back, and then also the part here at the bottom. And then just kind of fade it in towards the center here. 
just like that. Now I want to add in some shifts in that tonal value. So I'm going to go ahead and come back up to my colors and I'm going to switch to the yellow right here. And we're going to start to kind of add in some yellow here. And now that we've got that in there, what we're going to do is kind of combine all these together now. And to do that, we're going to go up here to our adjustments layer. And then we're going to go to Gaussian Blur and select Layer. With that selected, we just need to pr uh, place our pencil on the screen and just slide to the right. And you can see how this gives us that nice gradient really kind of nice shift between those colors and just looks really, really appealing. So now that we've got that done, we're not done with the shadows though. I'm going to go in with one more texture. So let's go back up to the layers menu and make one more layer here. And then we're going to tap this one and we're going to set this one as clipping mask as well. Then I'm going to come back up here to my color palette. I'm going to switch back to that green. Coming back to my brush library now, I'm gonna use spots down here at the very bottom of that brush pack. And then I'm gonna use the same technique here and follow along around the edges, just like I did with the initial shadows. And it's gonna to start to build up the spot texture that really makes it have a believable pair look to it. Get that in there and then switching back here to the yellow Go ahead and add some of the yellow spots in there so that those kind of fade in to the green as well. Pull some in here towards the top. And that looks good there. And then finally, I'm going to come up here to white. And instead of actually using strokes around here, I'm just going to lightly tap. on the screen just to add in a little bit more of that texture. All right, there we go. I think that looks pretty great. Finally, let's go ahead and add a kind of blown out highlight here. So making a new layer again, we'll set this one as clipping mask. And then I'm gonna go ahead with white still selected here. I'm gonna switch over to this texture grain inking brush and probably make this a little bit bigger, so maybe about 10% here. Just draw a round highlight here, going back up to the adjustments menu and going to Gaussian Blur again, layer, and just sliding this to the right. And kind of have that nice round highlight there at the top. All right. Looks good. Next up, let's go ahead and add some shadows and highlights here to the top with the leaf and the stem. So coming back up to our layers menu, let's come down here to the leaf. One thing you can do now too, if you are using an older iPad or a non-pro version, if you want to go ahead and combine the layers for the pair itself, you can go ahead and combine those because we are done with that section. So that'll save you some layers there. Everything else though, you still need separated right now. So with this selected then, let's go ahead and make a new layer here. We're going to set this one as clipping mask as well. Coming back up to the color palette, let's use that dark green again here. Coming to my brush menu, I'm going to switch back to the sand here. And since this is smaller, I want to drop this down to probably about 8%, maybe even a little bit lower. Let's go 5%. Let's go four. And we'll start to build up shadow along here. And then I'm also going to switch here, my color palette back to yellow and just add in a little bit of yellow there, so it's got some different values across there. I'm going to shrink that brush down a little bit more up here at the top. All right, so we've got that in there. Next up, adjustments layer again, Gaussian blur, and layer. We're going to use this technique quite a bit in this video, so we'll just slide this to the right, and you can see it kind of gives it that nice three-dimensional feel to it. 
a lot of changes there kind of that gradient really makes it pop so there we go next up let's go ahead and work on the stem so we've got the actual stem part first not the top so we're going to go ahead and select this and let's go ahead and make a new layer again we're done with the leaf as well so if you want to merge those you can the stem selected here new layer on top we're going to come back up to the color palette and we're going to choose this lighter brown color right here and then i've still got this on that sand with it fairly small here we're going to hit the front section and kind of pull this in towards the center like that and also hit black here on the back so back to the color palette and black kind of hit that just a tad bit back there coming up to our adjustments again going to blur layer sliding to the right so there's that and now let's kind of work on the top part here so once again back to our layers we can go ahead and go to that layer three this one we can go ahead and just draw directly on top of this one so if we hit alpha lock here this is going to allow us to do the same thing as clipping mask however it's on the exact same layer so you can't adjust opacity later if you use the eraser it's going to erase everything so that's why i prefer clipping mask over alpha lock because the clipping mask is non-destructive but in this case we can just use it here because it'll be fairly simple so now that we've got that let's go ahead and go to our color palette and let's go ahead and use this white here towards the front we're just going to kind of pull some lines and some texture across there and then going in with that darker brown here towards the back i want to use it up here away from the stem itself just like that and now back up to adjustments and the gaussian blur layer you can slide that and we've got the top done there so there we go now we need to move on to the face and i think we'll go ahead and start out with the mouth first so let's go ahead and we'll select layer 10 this tongue layer here on the left first we're going to go ahead and alpha lock these we'll do these the same way that we did that top so we'll alpha lock this we're going to go ahead and go to our colors palette and second row third color over got that darker pink here just hit right there you can see this is why we put these as two separate layers so this already allows us to build up that three-dimensional quality because these are separated then i'm going to select white right here and just hit the top of that tongue then coming back up here to adjustments gaussian blur and layer and just sliding to the right now we're going to do the same thing with the right hand going up to our layers menu tapping this one setting it as alpha lock since we've got white selected right here let's go ahead and hit that one and then the darker pink again just down here towards the bottom we've got that colored in then back up to adjustments gaussian blur layer i'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now sliding that to the right then you can just see how using that technique really gives that nice flow, that nice gradient, and it builds up that three-dimensional quality. This is one technique I absolutely love. So hopefully you'll put this in your arsenal of things going forward. All right, now inside of the mouth, coming back up to layers, layer eight, we're gonna go ahead and, let's see, tap this one. Let's go ahead and just alpha lock this one as well and coming over here to our color palette we're gonna go with black and i'm just gonna kind of drag a angle line there and then back here then back up to the adjustments layer once you've got that done gaussian blur again and layer we'll slide that to the right you can see how that kind of builds up that dimension inside there now with the mouth, I do want the mouth to kind of look not as standout-ish 
against the, the pear itself, especially once we do the highlights and the shadows. So with the mouth now selected here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna combine We'll see, actually, let's try this. Let me take off Alpha Lock now with the mouth. And then with that selected, I'm going to go up here to Adjustments again. I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur and Layer. And I'm going to slide this just about 23 2.4%. I want it blurred just a little bit so it kind of blends in more with what we're going to do. The eyes, I still want those solid, really sharp lines to stand out, but I think that's going to make the mouth look a little bit better there. So, all right, we've got that done. Now on to the eyes. So let's go ahead and let's start out with the pupils or the, let's do the irises first here. Let's build up a shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and tap that layer. And we're above the blue here. Set this one to Clipping Mask. And then with black still selected here. Actually, let's use this dark blue right here instead. Let's use that. I'm just going to start to draw in. Let's get them on Clipping Mask. But because this is clipped down here, it's clipping everywhere. So let's take Clipping Mask off now on the blue. So that way when we Clipping Mask this, it sticks to that blue. So we remove Clipping Mask here, added Clipping Mask here. So now I just kind of want to draw in some shadows here along the bottom. And this is going to be heavier here on this back side and along the bottom here. It's going to be a little bit more shadows back here. And then you can always go in here with the eraser I'm going to switch back to my texture set here. So I'm using the same one and that's sand. I'm just kind of fine tune these a little bit. All right, so now that we've got that build up, let's go ahead and go to our adjustments layer again. Gaussian blur and layer, sliding that to the right. So we've got a nice shadow in there. That looks good. Next up then, let's go ahead and add some shadows here to the whites of the eyes. So, let's see, now that we've got all this done, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and combine all these now. So the eyes now are all on one layer. So let's make a new layer now. Let's go ahead and tap that one. And let's go ahead and set that one as Clipping Mask. I'm going to come back up then to my color palette. I'm going to choose that dark brown that we used for the uh, stem up there. Now with this, I'm going to switch over to the Texture Grain Inking Brush for this one. This is still part of that texture pack. On this layer above the eyes then. I'm going to go ahead and start to draw a line here. I'm going to drop the size of this probably down to, let's see, a 2. I think a 2 works pretty good. I'm going to draw a thin line here around the top. Like this. And as it comes down here, I'm going to make this pretty big here towards the bottom. So it's going to be pretty thin up there at the top and pretty big at the bottom. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You can see this looks... Pretty uh, rough up there, kind of ratchet, but it's all right because if you haven't guessed it yet, we're going to use the blur as well here. So we're going to pull this shadow here even bigger around the bottom and back here. All right, so there we go. We've got that done. Next up, adjustments layer, Gaussian blur, and layer. Probably becomes second nature now to you by the end of this tutorial. And we're going to slide this to the right. Until we get it just right. About 11, 12% there. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit less. And then I'm going to go ahead and come in here to my layers menu. I'm going to hit that N for blend mode. I'm going to drop the opacity of this down. Drop the opacity down to about... About 55, 55% looks pretty good there. 
All right, so now we've got that done. Let's go ahead and add some highlights in here now. So once again, new layer, tap it, set it as clipping mask. Still on that texture green inking brush. We're gonna go in here with white. Do a highlight here across the top. And I'm gonna do some circle highlights right here. So we've got those in there then. We can even put another one right here. We're gonna go up two adjustments. Gaussian blur. Got a little too frantic there. Gaussian blur, layer. Slide to the right till we just get a nice blur there. 4.3% is what I use there. And there we go. So those look really three dimensional now. Like the look of those. Next up, let's go ahead and make the mouth and the eyes pop a little bit more from the body of the pair itself. So to do this, it's going to be a lot of steps here, but they're easy to follow along with. And it's really kind of a wash, rinse, repeat type of thing. So don't worry. Uh, let's see. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead now and merge all of the eye and mouth layers together. So everything above the pear shape, we're just going to pinch all those together just like that. Once again, if you have problems doing that, you can just go to that top layer, merge down over and over again until you're down to the last one. So now that we've got that done, all the eyes and the mouth layers are on the same single layer. So let's go ahead. We're going to slide this one to the left and we're going to duplicate it. So now we've got two of these. This bottom one here, we're going to go ahead and go to our colors palette and I'm going to select green here. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap this. I'm going to select this layer. I'm going to go back to my layers menu. I'm going to tap that layer again and then I'm going to hit fill layer. So everything on that layer now is green. And we're going to use, let's see, let's use three of these layers. So we're going to duplicate this twice. So we'll duplicate it once, duplicate it again. So we've got three green. And then we're also going to do a yellow layer. So let's do one more duplicate here. So now we've got four of these same layers. You can't see them here because they're all stacked on top of each other with this one being at the top. But they're all underneath. For the yellow layer, let's go ahead and layer eight. They're all layer eight. The, uh, the second one from the bottom here. Let's go ahead and tap that one. Let's go into our colors palette here. Let's go ahead and use yellow. Tap this layer again. Select. Go back to the layers menu again. Tap that layer one more time and hit fill layer. So now we've got three green layers, one yellow layer. So let's go ahead and start with the top one here. And we're gonna go up here to our arrow with freeform selected. We're just gonna start to drag this one up. And then with warp selected, I'm gonna pull this one out just a little bit here, more so at the eyes. I'm gonna pull the mouth back down. So I want the eyes to come up further here I want to keep the mouth pretty close to there where that mouth is. So there we go. We've got one layer done. Next up, let's go ahead and go to the next green down here. Arrow again, select freeform once again. We're going to pull this one down. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit warp again and just start to pull this down a little bit further. Once again, making sure it kind of matches up there, going from side to side on the mouth and the eyes. So we've got our second layer there. Now the yellow, once again, going back up here to the arrow, freeform selected. We'll pull the yellow down, going back to warp. So just kind of make sure everything lines up here like that and then finally back up to the layers menu the last green here coming to the arrow and with freeform selected I'm gonna drag that one down it's again hitting warp here to keep everything kind of lined up all right 
there we go. Right now, this kind of has almost like a chicken look to it, but that's okay. It's going to look better here in a second. So now that we've got those done, we've got those four separate layers. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pinch all those four together. So those are all on one now. And if you haven't guessed it yet, we're going to go ahead and add Gaussian blur to this. So with that layer selected, coming back up to the adjustments menu, Gaussian blur layer, we're going to slide this to the right probably about, let's see what looks good there, about 7%, 6.97%, I think that looks pretty good there. And you can see how this just added so much more depth and dimension to this character. Finally then, let's go ahead and add some white highlights in there. So back up to the layers menu, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. And no reason to set it to clipping mask or anything, but coming up to the colors palette and just selecting white, brush still using that texture grain and let's just add in just kind of some white highlights here on top of that yellow layer nothing too big or fancy just some small lines there once again they can be ragged because we're going to use the blur again so back up to adjustments gaussian blur layer slide that to the right got that set to about five or so percent 5.1 i think that looks pretty good there all right and that is our finished pair finally i just want to go ahead and sign this so i'm going to switch my brush here and switch my color and finally get this signed and we will be done with today's tutorial there we go a cute little pair and kind of a rendered almost pixar-esque style and you see just how easy it is to take everything from those basic flat color shapes into something that really has a lot of depth and dimension and a ton of personality too. So thanks for watching today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps other people to see it. And if you think other people should see it too, feel free to share it with your friends who might get some benefits out of this tutorial. If you guys do take part in any of these tutorials too, draw something based on them and you share it online, which I definitely urge you to do. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, tag me at BJ Dell. Or if you're on Facebook, I have a group over there called Keep Creating, a group for artists by artists, which I will link down in the description. Definitely a cool place to join. You can share your designs based on these tutorials or just really anything that you're creating at all. It can be any type of artwork. I want to see you guys and see what you're doing. So definitely hop on over there and join. But anyways, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. You can find me online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.